Wakey, wakey, boys and girls. They're here! I rewatched Nightmare and Silver yesterday. What a weird episode. What a weird episode. I really enjoyed doing the Doctor Who merchandise video, going through uh, the cool stuff that I had, telling the stories that came along with it. So, part two. I have enough for a part two, so why not? Grab your black currant Ribena, and let's just jump into it. One of the things I love the most about this community is the artists. Seeing the show from different art styles and forms and people is endlessly fun. Some you can find on Twitter, some you can find on Instagram, and some you'll find on Etsy. I got this as a birthday present a couple years back, so I don't actually know who made it, so it'll be in the description as well as... It's obviously themed around the London Underground, and it shows each line is a different doctor's, like, journey in the show. So, for example, Eccleston's got the shortest line here, going from Earth to Satellite 1 to Platform 1. And that's, that's it. Wait, hang on, it's, shouldn't it be Satellite 5? Well, now I'm throwing it in the bin. <laughs> Yeah, you get in there. Get in there! Get in there, you waste of But nitpicks aside, I find this awesome to look at. And yes, I've ac accidentally smashed it. It's been in storage a while. I've been waiting to paint these walls, which should be painted very soon. There's just so many little references. I mean, I'm wearing the Smith jacket now, right? So let's go through those. It starts off at Earth, as almost all of the Doctors uh, do. It goes to Akaten. Rings of Akaten! Uh, Callisto B. I don't know what Callisto B is. Someone tell me in the comments. Then it goes to Apalapachia. Oh, good. The disease-ridden planet. Rings differently after 2020, doesn't it? Vegas 12. Vegas 12? <laughs> also say it in the comments. I'm clearly not as versed in the Smithiverse. Demons Run, where a good man goes to war. It's... A good man goes to war... That was never not going to be about the Doctor, right? Like, Moffat was trying to be cheeky, like the fall of the 11th. Like, oh, I wonder what that's going to be. Trenzalore. We don't talk about Trenzalore. Alpha Matraxis. It rings a bell, but I... What the f... <laughs> Planet One. What is Planet One? And the Dalek Asylum. That's pretty easy. The Dalek Asylum. I wish... Can we go back to the Dalek... I know it got destroyed, but can we go back to the Dalek Asylum? There's a good story to be told there, as opposed to the one we got. And finally, Hedwig's World of Wonders. Like I opened the episode with the Nightmare on Silver. Yeah, that was not a good episode. Hopefully I found the Etsy link, so if you want one for yourself, buy it with the link down below. I promise your frame won't be broken like mine. <laughs> and before we move on to the next thing, because we're on the theme of art, so I'm cheating and adding a second one, because that one's there based on coolness and, and references. This one is on sentimental value. Have you heard the good word of the Dobson family? This piece, I believe, was created by Hybrid Dalek, uh, link in the description, and it is of little Rory Dobson and Colin the Dalek, uh, I believe based on an actual picture they posted on Twitter. After I interviewed the lovely people, they gave me two framed art pieces, one uh, of this and the other lives in my kitchen, a picture here. And it was just so kind of them, they didn't have to do that. And they are still very good friends, I'm hoping to go down and visit them again, they've actually got a new baby called Baby Ellis, and he's lovely, as far as I'm aware, he could be an absolute demon baby, Stormageddon Dark Lord of all, but I want to meet him anyway. Also, Colin the Dalek has a ring modulator now with the lights and everything so yeah I think the idea was to take him down to like Brighton Beach or something and, and me be in the Dalek and going around god I need to do that Dobson's we need to arrange a date <laughs> I just want to see the Dobson's again I love that family number two now last time I spoke about this one this one and a TARDIS box that's not everything they made. Because us lovely lots lucky enough to grow up in the Smith and Tennant era will remember their TARDIS consoles. Now the obvious pick would be the 10th Doctor console because, well I, I do own that and I own the whole thing, but first of all Josh showed that off in his video I do believe, and also it's the obvious choice as much as it is the better choice. It's got the lights, it's got the sounds. However, 
let's not forget this boy as well. We were very lucky to get this one. I mean, I know it's not perfect, it hasn't got the lights, it hasn't got the sound, it hasn't got any pressable buttons, but the detail on display is insane. Ignore the dust, but the, I mean, look, you can see through it, you can see all the, uh, the wiring underneath, you can see each individual button, like you can see the D-mat lever, the handbrake, all that lovely stuff. There's even a little hole to put the sonic screwdriver. I lost all my sonic screwdrivers, but if you were less careless like me, you can slot the 11th one in there, or any other sonic screwdriver in there, or like the 7th Doctor's umbrella if you're an absolute maniac. But character options, why did you have to stop with this one? You could have done the classic consoles, you could have done, well not the whole Capaldi room, that would have been huge, but you could have. But I am not one to be ungrateful. Well, yes I am, I'm a Doctor Who fan, but still. I am happy with what I got. Very happy indeed. As a Smith slut. Number three. Oh. You know what, guys? It's been long enough. I haven't mentioned Doctor Who Time Fracture in a while, have I? Let's fix that. I know not everybody got the chance to see it, which is a crime! But Doctor Who Time Fracture, for those who aren't in the know, was an immersive theatre production themed around Doctor Who. And it was the best thing ever. And it changed my life. Let me explain. I'm a fairly nostalgic person, so I often look back and see sort of my human life journey, I guess, to sort of find patterns and, and times where I was the happiest. 2020, for example, besides the obvious, was the year of me moving out. That's when I moved out with my now fiance, Gemma. 2021 was the year of the community show. That's when I started that and started doing all these cool interviews. And 2022, last year, was the year of immersive theater. And it all started in February with my first trip to Doctor Who Time Fracture. I'll show things off as we go. I do actually have a selection of items because I couldn't pick just one. First of which being this, the returning hero identification. Basically you stamp it every time you go and if you fill it all up, you get little perks. As you can see, I didn't actually finish. I only went seven times, so I didn't actually complete the collection. Or at least I wouldn't have. Here are all five of my hero badges. But like I was saying, in February I went to Doctor Who Time Fracture for the first time and I was enamoured. It was spectacular. The sets, the actors, the script, spectacular across the board. And I couldn't get my mind off it. It was magical. I was entranced. So I started messaging the actors asking if I could do a community show interview. And I, I heard back from a couple who were into it, but I had to talk to management, you know, get the consent and uh, okay, because, you know, it's, this is an officially licensed Doctor Who thing. So eventually I found the email of one Claire Chamberlain, who gave me my shot, essentially. I gave them this big old pitch in email form, uh, explaining that I had done MCM before and what the show was and what I would try and do, being like, look, I I I'm happy with an interview via Zoom. She said, oh, absolutely, this sounds like a great idea. Uh, why don't you come to the venue about a couple hours before the show day and you can talk to six of the actors? Think about how insane that is. A random guy on YouTube who had just over a thousand subscribers, who had only done about a season's worth of community show episodes, is being invited to a theater venue, an officially licensed Doctor Who show, before the show day to talk to six actors who played various roles from Time Lords and Unit Scientists. How weird is that? And other than tea or coffee, I believe I was the only one lucky enough to do this. Oh, and Blue Peter. I'm on the same level as Blue Peter. But I'll get back to that. Five hero badges. <laughs> but I only went seven times. What's that about? So as I mentioned, I did the interviews, which meant I was lucky enough to get to know some of the actors. Now, I won't say which one this was, because <laughs> I don't want to get them in trouble. On the final day, asked me, oh, did you, were you able to come enough times? I know you came a lot, but did you get all of the hero badges? And I said, no, unfortunately not. And so right at the end, like we'd gone through the whole show as normal, uh, this individual comes up to me with hands in pockets and goes, here, take these. And they're enough hero badges for me and Gemma to complete our set. I love that person, and you know who you are if you're watching this. I love you for that. Fuck yeah. <laughs> now, those are the things that I got that I was allowed to get. There are a few things that may have fell into my possession, 
in some form or another. But before that, immersive theatre. I know what that is now. Now fast forward to about halfway through the year, I'm looking for a new job. In the back of my mind, I'm remembering some of these immersive theatre production names. Namely, a few of them, like Simon Victor and Jess Elton, mentioned Secret Cinema a few times, so that name was in there. I see a job opportunity pop up. A front of house job opportunity for Secret Cinema. So I apply. And I won't bore you with the rest, as maybe that's a story for another time, but that led me to do Dirty Dancing, the cult classic film, and Guardians of the Galaxy, where I got to be a Ravager and lock people in an escape room prison where Rocket Raccoon breaks them out and I get to be part of the story. Back to Time Fracture though. <laughs> Number one is this Kablam like employee contract, <laughs> which actually has been signed by Gemma, hence why she had it. So this one was I was allowed to keep as far as I was aware, even though it is technically Gemma's, but Still cool though. The next ones are a bit iffy, so there's this. A ticket to the luxury space liner, the ZZ-1, which is basically the halfway point of the show. And I think very few lucky people actually got given this, and again, as far as I'm aware, I should be allowed to have it, you know, it's given to it, no one asked for it back. Sponsored by Kablam. <laughs> These two. <laughs> Let's start with this. This is weird, right? There's no escape from reality, it says. Now where? Did I get this and why do I have it? So if you've been, you will know that on one of the unit scientist's desks, I believe of Dr. Courtney, that character has a bunch of post-it notes and you can even add to it, I think at a certain point, but then it got a bit nuts so people hid the pen. But I noticed a couple people like started just sort of on the last day, picking one up, picking their favorite up and pocketing it. And who am I to not join in? I mean, they're not gonna miss that, are they? It's even blue tacked down so people don't steal it. Didn't stop me. But that's not my cheekiest. Also, okay, if anyone's watching from Time Fracture, you can have these back. If you ask for them, you can have them back. I'm, <laughs> I don't want to be blacklisted at all from anything future. This is just because it was the last day and I wanted mementos. So, <laughs> again, in unit, there was a little uh, folder full of these different files, which the unit scientist sort of flicks through and shows you things. Now, what they did as a mistake, this was a mistake on their part, was left me alone with it. So I picked one of the coolest ones. <laughs> Basically it's another contract signed either by me or one of the uh, scientists. And again, you can give it a read if you want, but look, I feel a little bad because it is essentially theft, half of these. I would never go back and change what I did because I miss this show with all my heart. I love it. it, it genuinely means so much, because not only because it was Doctor Who and it was a theatre Doctor Who and I got to do the interviews, but also just how it changed my life, how it changed the direction of 2021 to be the year of immersive theatre, and it introduced me to so many amazing people, like all of those actors I, I adore and I saw them as I worked for Secret Cinema. For example, Simon Victor, who was uh, either Lord Tepesh in Gallifrey or Dr Courtney, he played the Collector in Guardians, so I got to work with Time Lord. <laughs> and he's a lovely guy, and I got to see the likes of Jess go uh, uh, to these events, and Sam Hunt, who is absolutely adorable. And Angus, who played Shakespeare, has actually written for Big Finish. He wrote one of the 11th Doctor shorts, I believe. But okay, I need to wrap this section up. Thank you, Doctor Who Time Fracture, and everyone involved in making it. I will never forget you. And I, God, I hope you come back. <laughs> and let me be in it, please. Number four. Going back to Etsy, I love fan-made, like, props. For example, James Sutton. He's made tons over the years with, uh, I think it's Little Prop Shop. And again, with this one in particular, I can't remember who made it, but it is so cool. And I've used it in Doctor Who Road. This. This is a recreation of a prop from Doctor Who series 2, Age of Steel. Uh, basically that's that crystal that uh, Tennant gets out of the TARDIS. It's a prop you wouldn't expect, you wouldn't think to make this, but when you hold it in your hand it's so cool! Like it's got the sort of coral design, uh, you know, it's very clearly based on uh, the Tenth Doctor's TARDIS, so the prop team did a brilliant job in theming it. And I believe this is all entirely 3D printed. And that's not the only cool thing. The green bits also glow in the dark. It's just a little detail you don't need, but adds so much. And I kind of wish I had more to say on this. It was just a cool prop I bought off Etsy, uh, reasonably cheap for what it is. 
uh, got my use out of it and it looks amazing. What else do I need to say? If you want one of your own, like I keep saying, link in the description. Highly recommend it. It makes for a cool shelf piece. A hell yeah. Now let's move on to the final item. Did I hear someone say underrated? Yes, really, this is how I'm ending it. The Dalek Paradigm. I love them. Even at the time, I didn't understand the hate. I mean, yeah, the colors are a bit garish. Grow up. <laughs> now, I do understand people's issues with it. Like the silhouette is a bit weird and the colors are quite garish. I mean, they did fix that a bit in the Dalek Asylum episode, like the, the red drone in particular with the more chrome look. I love them. I love them a lot. They're, again, there's not much to say. And I'm so glad I've got the full set. I had the full set once. Then I had to get rid of them to make space. But then I was an adult with my own money, sort of. And so I got to buy them all again. <laughs> In fact, I think one of them, my uh, Gemma got me for it, for it as a present. God, I do well at birthdays. Going back to Time Fracture, seeing the Daleks whiz around in person and shouty shouty and the eye light up. I love their ranks. I love how different they are. You know, we have the drone sort of grunts, we have the scientist, the sort of techie one. We have the Supreme, of course, who is the best of the lot. We have the Dalek strategist, I believe is uh, Matt Smith's favorite from the Confidential. You know, he, he's in charge of battle plans. And then the Eternal, mysterious. I just think they're neat. And if you'd like to argue that, the door is there. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> and I do believe that is where I shall leave you. As much as I do have more cool stuff, I mean, hell, I've been wearing one this whole video, the BBC Shop 11's Dr. Coat, but, ah, need to move on to cooler things. If you have any ideas for other YouTubers I could rip off, let me know. <laughs> I don't think I'd do reviews. My opinions don't matter on episodes because they change a lot. I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know some of your favorite Doctor Who merchandise in the comments below. And I'll see you in whatever weird video comes next. Don't forget to subscribe to the official Jack Reeves YouTube channel.